Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the most used piece of equipment in just about everybody's shop out there is gonna be the drill press. Now, I have two drill presses, both of which are made in Sweden. Strands, I think, was the original manufacturer, but both of these are labeled do-all. But unfortunately, only one of them works, and that's this one. And I use it constantly and love it. But this one has some features that that one doesn't, but it's also got some problems. So let's see if we can't dig into this awesome drill press see what's wrong with it that way i can use it instead of it just taking up space so at first glance both of these drill presses look pretty much the same but there are quite a few differences in between these two for one this is just a bigger drill press for two it has power down feed which is broken and what we need to try to fix three this has a over double top speed spindle than the other one so i can drill with much smaller drill bits and still get the speed that I need in order for them to cut efficiently. And it has a lower bottom end speed so I can run larger drill bits without burning them up. So very, very nice drill press. The only bad thing is that the power down feed has some problems. So let's tear into it and see if we can't figure out you know, what the deal is. And if we're lucky, maybe we can fix it. So everything else on this drill press works perfectly fine, and technically you can use it as a manual drill press right now. The only reason I haven't is because I'm afraid if I continue to use it with a power down feed broken that I'll just make whatever problem that it has worse. And I think that the issue, because this does not feel right, is just in the part that engages or disengages the power down feed. But I'm not sure on that, just an assumption. So let's see if we can't start tearing into this thing and at least figure out what's wrong with it or maybe just fix it all together if possible. So there was a viewer that was nice enough to send me a parts breakdown on this. I believe it was on Instagram, but I immediately lost that and can't find it. So we're just gonna wing it and hope that we do things correctly. So hanging out in the background of the shop, we have <laughs> my lovely wife Elizabeth and the famous Mr. Bob, <laughs> Bobby. Go catch a mouse or something. So behind this cover, just a pin that the handle pivots on, and behind that is a big spring we'll have to be careful with when we take this pin out. But the two screws that hold this cover on, actually, that one of those same holes is used. It houses a set screw that locks that pin in. I'm glad I looked down in there. I thought originally that this pin was just kind of held in by friction, but it wasn't. It's held in by a set screw. So now let's see if we can get this pin out. Okay, not as much pressure on that thing as what I thought. So this thing has set screws behind set screws. So you have to really keep your eyes open for that kind of stuff. Really easy to miss. So getting this thing apart, a little bit tricky. I'll have to say, two places had set screws on top of set screws, which are super easy to miss. And had I not cleaned this up inside of here with a rag, I wouldn't have seen the keyway that's cut in this, and I wouldn't have known that that slid off the end like that. So I did take off several fasteners that I wouldn't have had to take off to get to the point that I'm at. But really, just in an, the, taking out those fasteners is just an attempt to see what loosens what. And I'm just trying to feel my way through this thing. And I think, potentially, we may have got lucky 
because what I found here is a mangled spring. I'm sure that's just not supposed to hang in there like that, so chances are that does something with this little dog here, adjustable latch, whatever you want to call it, that engages or disengages the power feed, and uh, could be the whole reason why this thing didn't work. So maybe we got lucky, I don't know. But I'm still going to pull apart all of the end stops here, adjustable bits, because I want, if that does fix it, if I can find a spring, that is, I want it to work smoothly in the way that it's supposed to and not be all crunchy and dirty like it is. So here's a look at the other drill press. The lowest speed on this one is 120 RPM, and the fastest speed is 1640. So the other one twice the top speed and about, what was it? 45 RPM lower on the slowest speed. So, you know, there are some differences, right? This one is also a little bit smaller, although tables same size, column and foot are a little smaller. And Bobby is back there looking for something. <laughs> you can't fit back there, Bob. He is trying his best to squeeze in that hole. Kitty Bobby. Maybe we got lucky, maybe. But I found the exact spring that uh, that I needed. I'm just kidding. I found one that's somewhat close and may work, and uh, that's what we'll try. How about that? So it's very possible that this machine was sold solely because of this issue, and somebody didn't dive into it and see that it. We don't know yet, but could potentially have been as simple a fix as a spring replacement. Maybe, just maybe. So a lot of times when you pick up this old industrial equipment, there's almost always something wrong with it. In a lot of cases, that's the reason why it gets sold. If we get lucky here and a spring fixes the power down feed, well, that machine will be fully functional because it does run. I know that, and all the gears work on it as far as its speeds. So that'll be a super nice addition to the shop. But you don't always get lucky. Like when I bought my K&T mill and found out that the clutch shaft was broken in it. That was a not a super complex part to make, but it was a pretty big deal to install it. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. You just never know. So I brushed on some paint stripper to remove the paint from these graduated dials. Paint's so thick on them I just can't see the graduations on them for the depth stop. Using some paint stripper here that I am not at all impressed with. I had two cans. An old can that I'd had for years. That stuff would pull your skin off if you weren't careful. But this environmentally friendly, you know, child safe paint stripper, not very good takes forever and you got to brush on three or four coats just to remove stuff that's not even that stubborn not impressed so it's finally starting to work 
I remember the old stuff. If you heated your parts up any, and you wiped that stuff on, it would just steam. Paint would just bubble up in front of your eyes. It was so fast and worked so well. This, you got to use twice as much and 25% as strong. Garbage. Garbage. So I guess I'm ready to start putting this thing back together. Hopefully it works. Supposed to go like that. I think that it will, but we'll just have to get it together and try it and see. Got a piece. So while I was tightening down that little set screw in there, the ball end of this two millimeter Allen wrench broke off down in there. So that's gonna be kind of tough to get out. It's stuck down in there. Hopefully it'll blow out with some compressed air because it is pretty deep down in there. We'll see. Maybe a couple of these rare earth bar magnets. We'll pull it out. Come on. There it is. Worked. So we're all wired up. Let's give it a try. Turn it on. I guess it's in where it should be. Huh. Well. Still no go. What is the deal? Well, we did fix one issue, but apparently not the issue or all the issues. Looks like I'm gonna have to dig deeper. So a little heads up to everybody out there. We've been having some big issues with the new hoodies, the new design with 
the company that we contract with to make those, Teespring, and I apologize if you picked up any of the new design t-shirts and you wash them and they completely, the, the image the picture, just yeah. totally disintegrates. They're absolute garbage and I'm not happy at all with, with them. We've sent two back here recently that we have to buy them as well. We contract them and we make apparel and, or we have them made simply because it's fun and we know a lot of people like to like to get that stuff and it does help a little but pretty yeah. much we make a dollar two dollars yeah. from a from which is not insignificant over time but <laughs> it's you know it's just a fun thing really yeah. um so watch out stay away from basically the hoodies and the shirts yeah at least for now until we can get this problem worked out now the mugs we've had no issue with the mugs or the stickers yeah. Really not the t-shirts because we ain't bought the t-shirts since we bought, mm -hmm. got since this the brand. New design, no yeah, but this sweater is new, a new yeah. design. Yeah. So I don't know if it's maybe the sweater yeah. or what. I'm not for sure. <laughs> but, uh, not much luck with them. Yeah. And it's not like you know it. it it's a big money maker anyway. So yeah. stay stay away from the shirts and the hoodies. If you want to get a cup, if you want to get stickers, whatever, that's perfectly fine. But in the future, Elizabeth has got a uh, laser engraver yeah, she's just <laughs> learning uh, that kind of stuff so she could she's thinking about making uh, I don't know. like keychains or uh, I don't know what coasters earrings whatever for yeah girls, yeah, like yeah anything, earrings for girls really. whatever <laughs> acrylic and leather yeah. and all that fun stuff it's an awesome piece of equipment that's yes. for sure <laughs> so just a little announcement watch out for you know teespring, the teespring shirts because we've had issue with them and uh, we don't want any of you guys, gals out there, to have the same yeah. experience. <laughs> well, a guy doesn't always get lucky. So we tore it down to basically where I you know, repaired this one piece. And now I'm going to pull off this side cover and hope that it's just something simple. You know it's not going to be, probably. But you can hope. If we both hope together, maybe we'll get lucky. That's uh, that's pretty intricate. So, unless there's a sheared key in here somewhere, which I don't think there is, the problem has to be upstairs there with the part that drives this unit. So it's a really neat gear set that goes here, and I'll show you in just a second. But I believe the problem is right here in this worm gear. No matter which way I put the levers, no matter what I do, I can spin this thing by hand. So whatever shaft or gear is hooked to this upstairs is most likely the problem. So this thing's been apart before. Somebody's pried on it here. Whether that is a bad thing or not, I'm not for sure. But... Whoa. 
Okay. Well, that one was easy. probably have to pull off that fitting. So this has turned into quite the mystery, actually, the mystery of the disappearing gear. Here, we have the shaft that runs down and powers the gearbox on the side that operates the power down feed. It has a clutch mechanism here this is my best understanding just by looking at it, that if the power down feed gets locked up or binds, it doesn't strip out and it just slips this little clutch. Problem is that there's no gear there. Powered by this gear should be. And there's no remnants of a broken gear in here, no teeth, no nothing like that. It looks as if it's just been removed. I'm assuming it was a very, pretty thin phenolic gear. These are phenolic. You can see these four here, not steel. These are steel, and I assume they run in the steel against the phenolic simply to keep down noise and wear. So I don't know, you know, maybe safety is the culprit here. Some technician tore into this to remove that to keep this thing from being used in the automatic fashion, keep some operator from getting hurt. Who knows, right? The, it is a mystery. So I'm going to have to either find a replacement for this, factory replacement, which I would 100% prefer, so if any of you guys out there could source one of these, possibly, or no, right? I have no clue on where to pick one of these up. It would be greatly appreciated. Or, you know, I'll just have to tear this thing down and make it, which can be done, but, you know, bigger process, that's for sure. So unfortunately, not going to get fixed today. But at least I know what the problem is. So check out this power down feed gearbox section. Look how nice that is. See this bronze gear here is where the power comes from the shaft that's missing its gear in there. It turns this shaft, right? This shaft here gets, slides in and out and determines which one of these gears gets connected to it. And that transmits its power either from here to here, here to here, here to here, or here to here. So, and then into the actual quill, which is on a rack and gets driven down. So really, really nice design there. It's obvious, they're nice drill presses. You know, it's a good example of you know, the craftsmanship that's in these things. So very seldom do I run across a drill press of this size and this heavy duty that has a top speed like this thing does. It screams 3,530 RPMs. That's pretty quick, really, for a drill like this. So let's see if we can't just do a quick demo. We'll run full speed on a number 76 drill bit and it's so small this chuck won't hold it so I've got a pin vise in here and then that number 76 drill bit in that pin vise and I think it's like 20 thousandths of an inch pretty small so let's see if we can't get a hole through this quarter inch thick hot roll plate right mild steel see how it does see if we can pull a good chip see if we can get through it relatively quick and not break the drill bit So this thing, it's an awesome drill press, it really is. It done a great job on that. Just clean, felt good. Just a extremely small hole. So in the meantime, till I can get, buy, make, whatever, a gear for this thing, I put it all back together because I can use it as a manual drill press now without damaging anything. And that was my major concern before, was because I didn't know the extent of the damage because I knew it had issue. I didn't want to use it and cause myself you know, further problems. And come to find out, it's a twofold issue, actually. I thought I had it fixed when I found the locking issue or the problem that it had there and got that resolved, but 
somebody has been in here and removed that gear, which is, for me, it would have been better if it would have just been stripped out, like a tooth or so missing, right, or broken half and laying in there. At least I could have stuck it back together and got a measurement across it, and that would have made my life much easier. I guess I could come up with a shaft to shaft distance there, come up with what I need to fix it. But that just, you know, complicates things a little more. So if anybody out there has one of these drill presses with a power down feed like this, and they don't mind pulling off a side cover, because it's really not that hard. Five bolts. And you could measure across that gear and email it to me. That'd be awesome. Or, <clears throat> excuse me, some of my viewers over in Sweden, right, maybe have the hookup on some parts for this thing. It's a long shot, but you never know. So I guess that's it. You know, at least I can now use the high and low speeds on this thing. So we'll fix it one way or another. Trust me. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever. It is appreciated more than you know. And that's it. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream Oh, I know you wanna scream Since the day you're born You're just a flower on your own